Marin San Quentin is a bike that claims to be just as good at big mountain enduro riding as it is at dirt jumps, skate parks, and pump tracks. And this weekend, I'm gonna put that claim to the test, taking this bike out on a trail ride to the pump track and to the dirt jumps. And we're gonna see what my first impressions are on this brand new bike from Marin. All right, we are at Horse Ridge Trail, following the beautiful but seldom seen Wendy. Yeah. We've actually never ridden here before. We've hiked here. This is the best winter riding spot in Bend. So maybe not the best riding spot period, but the fact that we get to ride even though everywhere else is covered in snow is pretty rad. Parkway trail is pretty mellow. There's a one or two little technical sections, but for the most part, it's just a pretty chill climb. So it'll be a good time to break in, see how this thing feels in more of a mellow seated climbing position. We'll get a little technical climbing in too as the day goes on. Despite this being over 500 millimeter reach, it feels pretty natural, not super stretched out sitting down, which of course is due to that 77 degree seat tube angle. Feels comfy, but it definitely feels like it would be a little long and a little hard to maneuver through a tight switchback. So I don't think we're gonna have a ton of those today, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that plays out. First time riding with gears in a little while, so nice to get used to that. So far this uh, SLX derailleur feels real nice. These Asagai tires have not been great through this sandy, muddy combo, but let's see how they do up the rocks. Not bad. Nope. Ew. One thing I remember about my first Gen San Quentin is that it rides pretty stiff pretty firm and this seems to carry on that same legacy definitely not a very supple hardtail but that's not always a bad thing that's actually going to be preferred for riding flow trails where you're doing a lot of pumping and hard cornering that snappy frame feels good but in those rocky sections it feels a little weird see how this thing likes to crank again Asgai tires not the best for stand-up sprinting up hills Especially not in dirt like this. Woo! Feel the burn! Holy crap. Pedal strike. The low bottom bracket. And long cranks. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of pedal strikes today. We'll see. I have a few more technical climbing spots here and some tire switchbacks. And I'm feeling the length of the frame a bit more. A little harder to maneuver around tight corners. But again, nothing I don't think you wouldn't get used to if you rode this bike for a while. I'm also being very conscientious of pedal strikes. Therefore, I've only had a couple. But I think that if I was riding this like I did with my RSD with a higher bottom bracket and shorter cranks, I would be hitting my pedals a lot in this guy. One thing I'll say is that the Asa guys do have plenty of grip on these climbs, so you don't need to worry about your back tire sliding out even when you're out of the saddle, like this. Oh, but my legs, man. A little shifting under load, fine. Hopefully, no pedal strikes. Oh, man. Not a fast climber. <laughs> Not a fast climber. Well, climb's done. Now we get to play. Now we get to play. Wendy has informed me that her tires feel really slow too. I think it's just the dirt. So it might not be all the ass guys fault, but it does kind of feel like I'm having to pedal down too. Granted, it's not very steep. Oh, long bike in the switchbacks. Clean it real hard in those corners. Fun, a little mud, a little snow, a little rocks. Yo, sick. Oh, I didn't hit my pedal. That's a miracle.
Ah, oh, thanks, Bucket. These pedals feel pretty good. That was actually the first time I slipped off them a little bit, but that could definitely be due to the conditions. I actually forgot I was riding new pedals, so I think that speaks wonders to them. Lots of fun side hits if we knew the trail better. <laughs> Fork feels pretty good. I think I need to put a little more PSI in it, but not bad. Didn't feel overly flexy, but wasn't exactly riding on anything too aggressive either. Wendy's stoked. She loves this kind of stuff. This ripping. Fun. Yeah, you can still point this bike where you want to. If you're thinking about upsizing this frame and are worried that it's gonna feel too clunky, don't. I like small bikes and for this kind of stuff, even though it's not the you know steepest, gnarliest, the bigger frame still feels fine. I'm actually surprised about that. Huh. I can hear Wendy hooting and hollering behind me. Oh. Back to the sandy bottom. All right, guys, leave a comment below if you want to see a Wendy learns how to wheelie video. Get it, Wendy. Yeah. If you're watching this video and interested in buying a San Quentin, I'm guessing you plan to use the bike on a lot more than just trail rides. And so because of that, I wanted to make sure I took it out to a pump track to see how it handled that faster, tighter, more aggressive riding style. I'm going to start by Warming up with some manuals. See how this uh, geometry fares. Short chain stays, but a lower bottom bracket means you gotta get that front end up a little higher to get in your balance point. Low seats make bales easy, I like that. There we go. I think we're ready to go to the pump track. Definitely feels a little clunkier in the corners with that long reach, but it's still doable for sure. The manual is okay still. So I just went ahead and walked out my form pretty much. Like I said earlier, there's not much compression setting in between fully open and fully locked on this Mozoki. So we're going with fully locked. And it feels good. Definitely feels a little snappier. Manualing through these bigger rollers always scares me. I think it's reminiscent of my BMX days. Being scared I was gonna case any crap. But I've got a 27.5 inch wheel, so I'm gonna go for it. Oh, almost. But I think I can still get the little ones. Phew. Good stuff. Woo. These acid guy tires are not helping with speed or grip on this asphalt. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh. 20 minutes of pump track riding and I'm shot. But this bike grips. With a trail ride and some pump track riding out of the way, the last thing to do was to take this thing out on some dirt jumps. My personal favorite dirt jump spot is currently covered in snow. So we're gonna go somewhere brand new called Klein Butte. Let's see how this Marin San Quentin handles some dirt jumps. So I really wanted to take this thing out on some dirt jumps because I know most people who are looking at the San Quentin to buy are planning to use it as both a trail bike and a dirt jumper. Sadly, the lair, which is kind of Ben's iconic dirt jump spot, is covered in snow. Thankfully, however, uh, got tipped off to this Klein Butte system. This is my first time here. Looks like pretty loose, kind of raw free ride style jumps. 
kind of long and lows like this, not very steep lips, real dusty. Not my uh, go-to dirt jump setup, but as we'll talk about in a little bit, I think it's actually maybe what this bike's strength will be. With that long reach and low bottom bracket, it'll be more stable at high speeds, but with the slacker head tube, might not be as good on the steep lips like at the lair. So let's see how it likes these. All right, a little drop in here, long and low. Well, sadly, my little trip to the dirt jumps ended prematurely. And honestly, that's my own fault. I took a bike that's brand new to me to a set of pretty advanced doubles that I've never ridden before. And I took a little trip over the bars uh, shout out to my Cascade Armory jersey. It did rip a little bit, but it definitely protected me from getting ripped up more. And definitely shout out to the San Quentin because after a quick once over, the bike looks like it's in great shape. I'll of course do a little deeper dive once I get home. I'll also review that GoPro footage, see if I can figure out what exactly happened. I think I just kind of washed out in that sandy flat, overshot a little bit, came in a little nose heavy and then just lost it. Um, but the good news is, we're okay and we'll definitely take this thing out to get a little redemption somewhere else down the road. I do, however, feel like I've gotten a good grasp on what this bike is like over these last couple days of riding it. And I wanna to speak to that just a little bit. Marin describes the San Quentin as essentially an enduro hardtail that you can take to the dirt jumps. And I think that description from Marin is completely accurate in terms of what this bike is good at, but also some of its compromises as it's trying to be two different things. It's a bit of a confused bike. It can't decide whether it wants to be a hardcore, hard charging enduro hardtail or a super playful dirt jump bike. And I think in some ways that makes it less good at both of those things but it also can make it a really good one bike quiver if you switch off between bike park runs and skate parks and enduro races. You guys know by now I'm a big bike geometry nerd. I think the frame geometry speaks a ton to what a bike will feel like on the trail. And the San Quentin is a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to geo. For example, you guys already know that it's got a super, super short seat tube. It's actually the reason that I wanted to get this bike in the first place. Makes it really good for doing jibby kind of skate park style stuff but it's also got a 64 degree head tube angle, which is gonna make it a great bike park bike or really good for enduro racing, but not so good at the jibby dirt jump skate park side of things. And the same goes with the back of the bike. It's got 425 millimeter chainstays, which are pretty short. It's gonna make it manual easier. It's gonna make it feel easier to bunny hop, do spins, but it's also got a pretty low bottom bracket with 50 millimeters of bottom bracket drop, which is gonna have the opposite effect, making it harder to get that front end up but it'll make the bike more stable at high speeds. Again, better for enduro or big mountain riding. The bike also comes with 27.5 inch wheels, which is getting less and less common on hardtails. I personally love those smaller wheels. It makes the bike more kind of playful, easier to maneuver, but it is gonna make it harder to just plow through stuff and maintain high speed. So once again, you've got a bit of a bike of compromises. They're trying to make an enduro bike that you can ride dirt jumps with, and essentially that's what that is. And if you wanna just leave it at that, that's fine. But over these last couple days of riding this bike, I've came up with kind of two ways that I would maybe build this bike up specifically for one or two of those areas. Again, either focusing more heavily towards enduro big mountain riding or towards jibby skate park dirt jump riding. So starting with the first, if I were to build this bike up as the ultimate enduro bike park bike, first thing I would do is actually make it a mullet. Now hear me out on this. Marin has already gone ahead and made the head tube five millimeters longer on every size, which should make the front end stiffer. It's also already got a super steep seat tube angle that's not gonna get hurt too much if it gets slackened out just a little bit. The bottom bracket is already really low as well, so if that gets lifted with a bigger front wheel, you're gonna be fine. So I would probably keep the 140 millimeters of travel, but with a 29 inch wheel in the front, and I think that would make a plowing enduro bike. It would be sick. And it would still have the shorter chain stays. It would still feel relatively playful, but I think it would rip as an enduro bike. The other thing that I think plays into making this a really good like high speed enduro build is that it's really easy to size up, which is essentially what I did with this bike. Usually I'd ride a large, but I got this in an extra large because that seat tube is still gonna stay out of the way. So it's probably one of the best bikes you can choose if you wanna upsize to get a longer reach, but still get that seat nice and low. 
Obviously, in addition to being a good enduro build, I think that would also make it a really good kind of free ride hardtail. So if you wanted to go ride like big desert lines and pretend like you're riding rampage on a hardtail, this as a mullet would be super rad. Honestly, even this bike as it stands is pretty good for that kind of hardtail free ride scene. Now let's talk about the other end of the spectrum. Maybe you're a little bit more like me. You prefer kind of slower, jibbier stuff, hitting steeper lips and skate parks. And as I always say, treating a trail like a skate park. If that sounds like you and you're interested in the San Quentin, this is what I would do with that bike. I would buy it in the size that fits you best. So again, for me at 6'1", that's about a large. Your seat tube is going to be ridiculously low. The large is like 375 millimeters. That's gonna make bailing off the back of the bike super easy doing stuff like fast plants and silly things like that, super easy and super fun. And then the only big modification I'd make outside of that is to actually steepen up the head tube by a degree or so. This thing is currently running a 64 degree head tube. I think running around 65 would be better for that kind of steep lip, jibby, slower style of riding or maybe trial style of riding. You would essentially turn this into a super rad like dirt jump bike that you could still go take on a trail ride. That's how I describe my RSD middle child all the time. That's another great bike if you're interested in essentially a trials bike or a dirt jumper that feels just as good on the trail. But I think this bike could be that too, especially again with that low seat tube and maybe just steepening up that head tube just a little bit. One caveat on that though, because the thing that you can't really change is how low the bottom bracket is that does make it significantly harder to get the front wheel off the ground. Like when I was playing around in manuals, I noticed that my balance point was a lot higher on this bike than on my RSD middle child, simply because that bottom bracket is lower. Lastly, I just wanna go over real quick some of the components on this bike. Everything seemed to work pretty dang well on this first bit of riding that I did. I was really impressed by the shifting. The Dior SLX combo was super smooth, never had a miss shift, even with not running the Dior cassette in the back. It's a Sunrace cassette. The Shimano four piston brakes were plenty strong enough. I never found myself wanting any more braking power and they also had a really consistent bite point, so no issues there. I personally wouldn't choose to run acid guys on my bike. I like a faster rolling hardtail, but the tires were fine. I think I said in my last video that these tires were not set up tubeless. It actually did come tubeless, so my bad. And props to Marin for sending them out like that. It just makes setting up the bike that much easier, which again is something that Marin prioritizes by sending it to a bike shop before sending it to you if you order online. Really the only part that I would have a slight gripe over is the Marzocchi Z2 fork. The compression adjustment on it seemed like it basically went from wide open to locked out without much middle play in there. So I don't know if maybe that's a bit of an issue with this fork when it came from the factory or if that's how they all are. If you ride a Z2 fork and you've had experience with that, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear if that's a one-off thing or if that's consistent with these forks. So hopefully my first impressions on the San Quentin 3 are helpful to you. It's been a ton of fun getting this out here and riding it and I'm really looking forward to taking it out on more trail rides, more dirt jumps, taking it to the skate parks over these next couple months before I will have to sadly send it back to Moran. It's definitely gonna be a hard bike to say goodbye to. If you have any ideas of things that you'd like to see me do on this bike, film with this bike, test on this bike, or if you have any questions, if you're thinking about buying this bike, let me know about that down in the comments. While you're down there, I'd really appreciate it if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, and then maybe share it with a friend who's on the market for a new hardtail. The San Quentin 3 is absolutely a bike that I would recommend to any rider who wants a hardcore hardtail. That's gonna be fun to ride, fun to jump, fun to just play around on. After you've done that, hop on whatever bike you have, go out for a ride, do your best to not fall like I did today, and hopefully I'll see you out there. Thank <laughs> you.